questions uh, for you that we, th we think might be interesting. Uh, one of the things that uh, you had mentioned in your presentation was that tillage is bad for the soil. Yeah. Most of us would agree with that. We wouldn't have any problem. And yet manufacturers in this country continue, as was brought out later, continue to manufacture um, implements that really do destroy the soil and, and the conditions we have there. Did you have that problem in South America? And have you been able to address that to, to get the, the manufacturers to do something different, to go to the next step, as it were, with good production? I think this is a disadvantage of United States and also of, of Europe, especially Germany. The, the machine industry for producing, producing tillage implements is so strong that you cannot, it's almost impossible to battle them. And in South America, it, was, it is interesting that we never had a very strong industry for tillage equipment. They, they, they started some of the of the of the industries that started as early as 19 and um, what was it 76. In 1976, Semiato started producing no tillage machine. And Semiato is a, is a factory that doesn't produce tillage machine. So what, what has happened in Europe and the United States that tillage implement industries suddenly are producing no tillage equipment. And this is, is in, in contradiction because the thing is that these industries know that it, everybody in this world would turn over to no tillage they would sell about 20% of their iron they are selling now. Right. So they know this and they, they come to these conferences and, and it, it's re repeated now and then again. So they know that they are going to make less business if they promote no tillage. So they resist the change as much as possible and oppose no tillage as much as possible, bringing into the scene mixed or contradicting messages. Yeah. And we, uh, as you said in your presentation, uh, the United States started no tillage about 10 years before it started to be adopted in, in a large scale, at least in South America. And yet we've stagnated, you know, we've just kind of leveled out at a fairly low level and the producers in South America have continued to increase to a very high level. Yeah. What, what do you think accounts for that? And we may have answered part of that in a previous question. Yeah, we did answer some of it in the previous question, but there are some other factors that would play a role. <clears throat> for instance, South Americans, uh, uh, South Americans understood if you go into no tillage, you go permanently into no tillage. And for some reason, American farmers understood you go into no tillage, but the next year you till, and you change between tillage and no tillage. I don't know the reason for that. Perhaps it's, it's answered in the first question that machine industry is giving these mixed and contradicting messages. So people always till a little bit and, and no till seed and so on. And South American farmers soon discover the longer they do no tillage, the better the system gets. And they stick. And so most of the farmers in South America will stick to permanent continuous no tillage, while here in the States it's only 10 to 12 percent. The, the next question concerns who the no-till message should go to, and that's kind of a no-brainer. It should go to everybody in production. But when, especially when you're in a, a new area where you're where you're taking this message message of soil health and no tillage, um, especially the the complete package, because there's a lot of people who no till but they don't really do the cover crops and everything. Yeah. Are there characteristics of those people who will adopt that? Who would be more likely to adopt? This, this kind of system that you've, that you've noticed in, in your years of, of work with? Yeah, I would not uh, know a specific, or the, it doesn't come to my mind, what specific um, uh, 
reason is why some groups would adopt it easier and some others others not. Of course, I know <clears throat> several reasons why in Europe it's not taking off as, as it has taken in South America and, and in Europe compared to the United States it's very little, uh, very little adoption of no tillage. And um, of course the, the one big problem is that the properties in Germany for instance are very small. And if you have very small properties, the, the advantage of, of having a larger equipment and do more land is, is not there, mm -hmm. you know? So the very small property in Western Germany, in Eastern Germany it's difficult, different. There you see some no tillage because you have the larger farms. But also the mentality. It's a, it's a big problem. The tradition, mm. a German just cannot believe that you can go do agriculture without a plow. It <laughs> seems like if you take him a plow, you're taking part of his soul and, uh, and he continues in the tradition of plowing. The biggest obstacles that we seem to have in the United States toward, toward wide adoption of a complete soil health system really concerns itself with with some of the regulations that we have from our government here in this country, of which obviously most of us are a part. But the, the crop insurance situation, some of the FSA rules and regulations, which is uh, an agency of our government that stabilizes the pricing, pricing system and so forth, uh, are such that they have made it difficult for some to, to be able to look at it. Have you had similar problems like that in South America in the countries that you've worked in? We have the opposite problem. Um, for instance, uh, Münchner Rück is one of the biggest uh, insurances and uh, general insurance companies. And they have decided that the farmers that do no tillage will pay a lower fee than those that do conventional tillage. While this is, is unheard of in Europe or in other parts of the world. And <clears throat> Another thing that calls my attention is that um, in, in Paraguay, if, some, if the, a landlord would lease the land, he will say, condition is that you do no tillage. And I've run in the United States often in a situation that landlord says, condition is that you don't leave that trash over there on the soil and you do conventional tillage. So, Landlords are not aware that their soil through no tillage is being improved. While in South America they were aware that the soil gets always better the longer you are in no tillage. And this awareness for some reason has not been risen in, in the United States. That's a good point for us. I mean, that, that may give us an opportunity to to see a way we can educate people, to try address, to educate the landlords. Address the landlords and tell, look, gentlemen, perhaps my presentation was uh, mostly on that line. If you show a land, the landlords this presentation, they will say, well, gee, my soul would be improving instead of degrading, no tillage. I, I have to quit stopping this, this uh, attitude of not allowing no tillage in my farm. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think unless one of these other gentlemen have another question for us, that was that was very good, and we certainly appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be at this conference, and I congratulate you for your effort. And really, what I have seen here is that you have very good people, very hardworking people, and that they have really understood the message of the whole system, the holistic system of no tillage.